going to call the Town Council Road Construction Work Session to, uh, to order. Um, while this is a kind of an informal work session, I do want to have the Pledge of Allegiance. So, if you would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, if you would remain standing as well for a moment of silence for military and public safety uh, professionals past and present. Thank you. Thanks for coming everybody. Uh, we're going to do a second public session here. We're going to first we're going to have a uh, presentation by Kip and Mike like we did last time and then we'll follow it up with some Q&A. Um, oh, you know, we're also going to be sending around a, uh, a sign up, a sign in sheet. If you would put your name and other contact information there, that way we can make sure that you're on the email blast and, and uh, uh, you know, reach out to you if, if there's any change in any of the information. So I'm going to introduce uh, Kip Matthews, Director of Public Works. He's going to start and then we're going to have Mike Whitehill, who's our project manager. Uh, he'll come in as well. Yep. Uh, some of you may have heard this presentation before. There's some things that may have changed. Uh, we have a schedule laid out. That schedule is going to change through the course of the, the project. I'll start with the explaining the project to you. Um, what we're doing is replacing the water and sewer lines on both Liberty and Commerce Street. Uh, in order to do this and to do it safely because of the narrowness of the streets, we have to take and close the traffic off to it. When I say that, I mean we're going to restrict the traffic. The road's not going to be completely closed. There may be areas where the construction is happening that may be narrowed down to the point we may have to reroute you around uh, whether the construction is right on Liberty or whether it's on Commerce Street. It's broken down into four phases. The first phase <coughs> starts at the bridge on the north split of the town, and it'll continue up Liberty Street up to Fayette Street. The second phase will start at the south end of town, come up Liberty Street to Fayette Street. While that's occurring, all the traffic that we can we're going to divert to Commerce Street and make this two-way. Uh, right now, this is projected to uh, happen on the evening of the 3rd and into the 4th of January. The third phase of the project is going to be from the South Bridge at Mill Stream and come all the way up here to um, Lawyers Row. When that's occurring, all the traffic's going to be switched over to Liberty Street. It'll be two-way there. The fourth phase is from the bridge at the north side up to Lawyers Row. That, can, that takes care of the four phases. Once we're done with our work, State Highway's coming in and they're going to mill and overlay the, uh, the surface of the road and try and correct some uh, storm drain issues. That's kind of why we're trying to move this project along. Um, the council went and got a bond for us to pay for the, the work. Some of this infrastructure that we're replacing is old fire hydrant systems that were put in in about 1913 that still used for part of the water system in this town. So uh, with that being said, it's long overdue for replacement. The uh, other there's another section here on Water Street. Um, Water Street from Commerce to Belvedere is going to change to two-way traffic while the construction is going on also. You may have noticed that the traffic lights, there's been some added and there's been some uh, bags over them here at the intersection of Commerce and uh, Water Street. That's to accommodate the two-way traffic. Um, uh, we know this is going to cause a problem because it's going to restrict parking along uh, the stretch of Commerce Street. For that, the town has made accommodations. We've added some more parking behind 
105 North Liberty Street. Um, more than what we had uh, to begin with. So there's approximately 20 spaces there, I believe, 18 Six spaces. Stripe, stripe so, um, and as of this morning, uh, we were able to uh, make a deal with the property at the corner of um, Liberty and Border Street. And you may have seen our equipment there uh, prepping that site so that there's another 12 spaces in there as well. Um, there, if all of this information is on the town website, you can go right to the home page. There's an icon in the corner that you can click on. Included in that is a list of the parking areas around town. There's an uh, associated number of parking spaces for those places as well. So uh, we've more, more than adequately, I feel, made up the extra parking spaces that are going to be lost when this change is over. One other thing that is going to remain, but the, the direction is going to change, in front of those shops on Commerce Street, the 15 minute parking is going to be switched to the other angle so that if you're coming southbound, you can pull right into it the way it is now because Commerce is northbound, you come up and you pull directly into it. We're also going to add, I believe it's three more spaces there as well. So um, we've done some things on uh, Border Street up here to add parking there, to allow parking there, when that goes to two-way traffic. The way it is right now, uh, the parking is too narrow, even though there's two lanes there, if you're coming eastbound, to make the traffic two-way, it's just too tight. The parking spaces there are only about six feet wide. What we did, we had enough sidewalk on the west end of the, the road to cut the uh, curb and gutter back and expand it so that we get a full parking space, out, full width parking out of it. Uh, the, it's not only the water and sewer mains, we're also replacing the service lines from the mains back behind the sidewalk. Uh, the only sidewalk work that you'll see done in this project is just repairs where we'll have to cross uh, and to work on the water meters, the clean outs, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, the entire stretch of it is mainly just the water and the sanitary sewer. The, the um, as I said, the curb and gutter uh, are going to remain in place as well as the sidewalk for another project sometime. Uh, with that being said, I'm turn it over to Mike uh, Whitehill. Mike's going to be our project manager on the uh, this job, and he's going to be the one that uh, either, for the most part, you can contact him, you can contact the town office, you can contact me. But Mike is pretty much the manager on the street for this project. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. One of the things I think that was uh, decided by the council was that we, uh, in deference to some of the uh, uh, restaurant owners along Commerce Street, uh, to have uh, the ability to have a, a pickup and delivery lanes or pickup and delivery spaces, uh, some of the 15 minute spaces uh, will be, uh, I think that's now the case, would be converted to pickup and delivery. We also would like to designate one over in here for the steam pot as well. It turns out that, and at, uh, Chief Rhodes brought this to our attention, that if you have a 15 minute space, it's much, uh, much more likely to be abused than a restaurant pickup and delivery space. It's some psychology I don't understand, but uh, well, you do, right? Yeah, and so uh, because of the uh, the potential for the abuse, all we would do is simply take a metered space and kick it down so that you would still have the same, same number. So that was uh, the potential of putting two in that area and one over here uh, was uh, a point that I think Sal and, and, and Lisa. Hmm? Excuse me? Yeah, they'll, they'll be that, that will be the equivalent number. Yeah. So, uh, so then uh, another option uh, in meeting with some of these property owners down here, there's a couple of vacant lots that, uh, that have become vacant. Uh, I think a house was torn down on 216 uh, uh, Commerce, and uh, uh, the owner uh, would, would entertain the possibility of also using that for parking. So we've been going uh, door to door 
uh, in an effort to find uh, uh, private owners that are willing to, to parlay parking to, uh, to the citizens uh, and the, the businesses, particularly in the central business district that, that might be displaced by it. Uh, parking on, uh, on Happy Lady uh, and parking on Liberty Street uh, during this construction phase. Uh, one of the things I think was unclear, and, uh, and I think we, we need to make a conscious effort to clear up from the last presentation was that if we're, for example, if we're working down here along, up along toward Academy, uh, all the rest of Liberty Street is going to be functioning as it functions today with the exception that it won't have through traffic on it. So that any of the businesses, the rest of the owners, the property owners, the businesses taking local deliveries, uh, taking uh, you know Federal Express or UPS deliveries, uh, uh, fire services, and all the rest of that will be maintained in the areas. Our main purpose is for us to again facilitate the construction and shave time, uh, uh, essential months off of this project, was to take the the, the burden of the through traffic. Uh, off of Liberty so that we would be able to string the pipe and move our equipment back and forth uh, with, with uh, ease to the various staging areas that we have set up. So, uh, and again, the, the same applies uh, in the flip condition, Commerce Street will be uh, fully available and accessible in the portions that we're not working on. Uh, the uh, uh, stop conditions, I think Kip mentioned the stop conditions at Liberty Street uh, and at Broadway. Uh, and, uh, and the through traffic uh, would go basically basically straight through without a stop. It's not a four-way stop condition. It's a straight through on this to, uh, to facilitate the movement east-west. We've always had kind of an east-west problem. I mean, it's a little bit of a snag. We're hoping that this will at least uh, relieve that for the duration of this construction. Uh, my name uh, and, and uh, telephone number and email address, I think you've set up a special uh, call so that if a call comes into the town hall, it can be forwarded directly to me. And I did take a couple of calls from, uh, from concerned uh, residents uh, the other day. So I know that system is working. Uh, feel free to call us. Uh, I'll be working directly with the contractor. You got to understand weather is an issue uh, and it always will be an issue when we're, when we're working a project like this. Uh, fortunately for the guys doing it, they're about five to ten feet underground, so it's warm down there. But uh, but the weather that, that we're concerned about is the is moving these, particularly these water laterals, when we try to set up jumpers and whatnot to make that feasible, so we keep as many people in service as we can. The uh, delays in service will be when we're essentially right in front of you, uh, and for uh, for a short period of time when we connect the jumper lines. Now we aren't creating parallel lines here; we're actually replacing the existing lines that are there right now at the same lines and grades that they exist. Uh, so uh, one of the benefits of doing it that way is that we avoid any potential conflicts. The conflicts have already happened and have been resolved in the original installation. Uh, getting rid of terracotta sewers, the old uh, terracotta sewers and, and cast iron mains with leaded joints uh, is, the, uh, is uh, part of the main objective of this because those lines have been in since some of them since the 40s and, be, and before, well before. So our goal is to, is to modernize and upsize the systems so that we can pro provide water and, and potential links to the water towers that we now have and the future water tower uh, that would be uh, constructed out by the uh, a new county office building. Uh, we have a lot out there, one acre lot on that new site that we're going to uh, be serving with this. This will allow us to loop everything through town. So that's essentially the main project and like I say, uh, when the contractor is, is working in an area uh, in front of a home or a series of homes, those homeowners will be notified by the contractor just pretty much as they were on Liberty and Brown and, and uh, Pennsylvania. We'll try to get the, uh, uh, the uh, property owners notified uh, well in advance uh, and also to try to time it so that uh, so that we don't have, I think Sveen actually did, uh, your bride got soap in her hair that one day. Uh, she was taking a shower and the water got cut off. So we're going to be a little more vigilant now that we've learned the lessons uh, about making sure that we get them while uh, people are less likely to be at home. So that's part of the lessons that we learned in our previous project and we're getting better at it, I hope. So that's pretty much what I have. Kip, did you want to add anything? <coughs> Um, the one thing I just want to make sure that everybody understands, when I say we're closing Liberty down, uh, what's going to happen, and when it flip-flops, it's just going to be the opposite for the opposite street. At the north and the south intersections, it's going to be barreled off and the traffic paint 
and everything to direct the traffic coming from the north to the south onto Commerce Street. That doesn't mean traffic won't be able to go up here. The residents that live there, any deliveries that they get at their house, uh, fire, EMS, police, all of that will still be taking place on Liberty Street. As will trash, trash collection. And trash collection, before, recycle. And recycling, when the recycling came through and we were working in front of a project, our town inspectors actually moved the, uh, the bins down to where they, they could be picked up by the by the uh, service company and then brought back, our inspector actually brought them back to the homes when they were done. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. Yeah. Is that everything you guys had? Yeah. Um, Steve, did you want to add anything or, or put anything on there before we move to Q&A? Just on the uh, additional parking that we were trying to secure. Okay. Jeff, do you want to add anything before we do Q&A? Jim? Yeah. I, one thing that I can tell you that we have also um, worked very closely with State Highway. They have done an excellent job expediting this project. Um, they, because they have projects that they need to do as well, and we're trying to eliminate conflicts with their stuff. Uh, like I say, they've worked very closely with us. Uh, we've worked very closely. Charlie has reached out to all the emergency services and uh, we've t spoke with all of them, including the fire company, um, so that they all understand what the project is and how we're going to be able to get them wherever they need to get to in the case of an emergency or what have you. Um, the uh, school, we've reached out to them. We've actually met with the, the bus drivers at the uh, Board of Ed and explained <coughs> the situation to them. Uh, to make sure that they fully understand that they'll be able to pick up their kids and, and drop them off safely <coughs> and where they need to be and everything also. So. I think for those that weren't here before, uh, one, of the, one of the rationale for, uh, for doing the project the way we're proposing to do it is that these the utilities that we're dealing with here are largely the deeper ones are right in the middle of the darn road. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, when you're dragging a trench and a 10-foot uh, cut going through there and widening the top of it, there's no room on either side of the road to do a lane shift. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember, but when we did uh, Broadway, uh, when we finished Broadway down here, we were able to shift the traffic to one side and then work on that and then shift it to the other side. Uh, we can't do that in this case because the darn utility is right dead smack in the middle of the road and the, to the top of the, of the prismoidal cut on each of those uh, sewers, particularly as we head into downtown where it gets really deep. It's about 14 feet in some places up in here. It's a monster that uh, we're really opening up a lot of road to get down there to the existing utility, which means we can't get that uh, uh, lane shift that we had. Uh, we were able to do on the previous streets. Do you have anything you want to add? So as they've mentioned, two weeks ago, we had our first meeting on this topic. And a lot of you were here then. And um, several of you made some good suggestions. And in the intervening two weeks, I think you've seen efforts around town where, where we've all tried to address those concerns as best we could. There have been some changes from that very fresh look at that. I mean, two weeks ago, it was new to all of us, including the council members. So we were all taking a look at it for the first time. And we were all trying to figure out how to do this together, how to come up with the best ideas together. And several of you offered some good ideas. We've tried to respond to as many of those as we can. Um, and keep them coming. If you've got some ideas that can help us make this a better project, that's what these meetings are for, is to show here's what we've got so far. If you've got a way to help us make it better, please help us out. So at our last uh, conversation, it was discussed about having an electronic sign. State Highway was going to provide us with some electronic sign, a couple electronic signs. Uh, there was a business owners meeting uh, about a week or so ago, and the consensus there was to not have any electronic signs. And if, you know, State Highway was very amenable to working with us to whatever notice we wanted to have on that or if we didn't want to have it at all. So I'm happy to, you know, we're happy to hear comments on whether we want to sign, whether we, we don't want to sign, or if, you know, what we want the sign to say. Um, we're not sure if we, if and when we get a sign, how, how long it will be up. But, you know, as of now, I think the, the business community has, has come to us and said, we don't want any signs. We don't want any signs deferring traffic, period. So 
as of now, I think that's kind of where we stand. Um, but you know, if, if somebody comes up with something that's an interesting alternative, we're happy to talk with State Highway about that. As of right now, as of right now we, we have not notified State. We haven't notified State Highway as of yet about that. Yep. So, so we're gonna go. We're gonna, let, let's. We're gonna go through a Q and A session. Okay. The way we're gonna do it is we're gonna start up here and we're gonna go. You know, row by row, person by person. Everybody's gonna have an opportunity. You're gonna have three minutes. Ask your questions. We'll be happy to do our best to answer them. If we can't answer them, we'll we'll certainly get back with you. If you don't want to have a question and you just want to talk for three minutes, you're welcome to do that as well. So, I don't think you have to come up and necessarily uh, use the microphone unless George says we have to. You want him to do that? All right. Why don't we just Why don't we just pass it? So, what I would ask is if you would just stand up, state your name, maybe where you live, uh, street or or doesn't have to be exact. And then we'll start over here. This is being recorded by QAC TV. So before we do get started, I want Carolyn to read the uh, kind of notification, just so that everybody knows that it is being recorded. Uh, welcome to this meeting of the Centerville Town Council. This is a public meeting and we welcome your participation. By attending, you acknowledge that this session is recorded. During the meeting, we ask that you turn your cell phones off and hold personal conversations outside the meeting room. Public comment will be limited to three minutes per person. The Town Council respects and appreciates your desire and right to convey your message freely. And in keeping with the dignity of proceedings, we ask that all views be expressed in a respectful and civil manner. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. If questions are a part of your comments, we will refer those to the appropriate individual. Thank you. All right. I think the biggest thing to, to, to get across is we're going to give every person in here a chance to speak. We're going to have to stick to the three minutes because if we let somebody go on, it's just going to take too much time. Everybody will get three minutes. Everybody has an opportunity. So if you have something to say, feel free to say it. Yep. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Discouraging at all, honestly. I've seen a project on, I think it's Kidwell. Oh, it took a long time, and the one on railroad seemed like it was just snail's pace. And and I don't know if if we contracted with a small business or what the particulars were of that, but I'm scared that we're going to be dealing with a slow, slow, slow pace. So my question really is to with whom do we contract? Are we uh, under terms and conditions that are going to make it as slow as those other projects were? Were there reasons that they were slow? Um, and basically, is, is there any way that we can incent the contractor that we do have to be as expeditious, expeditious as possible? Mike, do you want to answer yeah, that? Sure. Uh, right now, we don't have a liquidated damages uh, uh, contract with uh, with the contractor. Uh, in in the town's experience and in my experience, the liquidated damages, while it sounds like a good idea, usually ends up being a legal boondoggle. But but we do understand your point, and uh, and I'd like to point out that Liberty and Commerce, that Liberty and Brown and and Pennsylvania Avenue and those were all full depth construction projects. They weren't sewer and water projects. They were sewer water new subgrades, removing the old concrete roadway that was in there. We took all that old concrete road out. Yeah, there was a, yeah, and there was sidewalks, curbs, uh, relocations around poles, all all kinds of stuff that went on. There was a, it was a full you know side to side redo. What we're doing here is simply taking the existing utilities and replacing them where they are today, uh, and not we're tunneling under curbs and we're where we can tunnel under sidewalks if we don't have a meter sitting in the sidewalk, we'll tunnel under that. So our object is uh, is it's a much smaller scope so that it will go a lot faster. That was about uh, 3,200 feet uh, just on Kidwell alone uh, of full depth construction. Each of these streets is about 4,000 feet uh, roughly. You know, Commerce is a little bit longer because it bellies down toward Little Kidwell. Uh, but, uh, but we're hoping that, uh, and our schedule is based on, barring a really horrible weather, uh, is based on, uh, on simply doing the utilities themselves. Uh, doing it this way allows us to string out long lines of the utility pipes. I don't know if you've seen it when we actually get working. If we know we're going to do 300 feet a day in a, in a, in a, or 400 feet a day with sewer or water, we'll string that pipe right on out and, uh, and keep going. And that's one of the advantages of having clean roadway to do it with. Thank you for your question. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. The first yeah. thing they ask is, 
Yeah. If he finishes early, you're going to pay his money. Yeah, exactly. And like, yeah. 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 Yeah, and, and normally those incentives, the problem with them is, is that when you get to the end of the project, uh, they're going to uh, the argument about how many rain days did I have, how many snow days did I have, uh, was I late because you didn't take the bill, was I late? So the, the legality of the whole issue tends to string them out, and I think that's why most contracts, uh, except state, state contracts, will still do liquidated damages. Uh, most munif uh, sovereign municipal contracts don't anymore, and I think that's because they just ended up in court for years and never got it resolved. That's a good point. Now, one thing I want to add just shortly about the Kidwell project. That project was an 18-month project. It started the week before Thanksgiving, and they are well ahead of schedule. We knew what was involved in it. You folks may think it took forever. We think it's been a little bit faster than what we had even expected, expected it to be. Uh, you know, I understand that there's delays with the traffic and that kind of stuff while the project's going on, but we are very happy with the contractor's progress. We're very happy with the end product that we're getting, and we can only hope that this product, this project goes along as smooth. I will tell you that it's a, um, a eight to nine month uh, time frame for each road. That's eight to nine months on Liberty, another eight to nine months on uh, on the Commerce Street side. Now that's our part of the project, right? That's not talking about the Millen Overlay and uh, Yeah, that's state, not talking about that. That'll board. come afterward, yeah. Yes. Okay. But we're obligated under the state highway because we're dealing in a state highway to bring the, the subgrade. Everything, all of our trenches have to come up and meet the full compaction. We have an inspector in there compacting every single lift of soil from 14 feet down all the way up. It's quite a process. And uh, so that's all been arranged, and, is, and those, those contractors are ready to go. One thing I will tell you on, on Liberty Star, on, on Kidwell, as an example, we thought we could salvage existing storm drains because they were a, a fairly recently installed uh, concrete storm drains. But when we got in there, we found all kinds of problems with uh, brick manholes and stuff that was, was uh, uh, corrupted from the outside. The underground pipes weren't sufficient. And so we actually ended up doing a little bit more on that contract than we had anticipated. We know the same thing is going to happen here. We know we, what we, we may run into combined sewers. Uh, we didn't expect that on Broadway, where a sanitary line uh, uh, from, uh, from a, a house, from a, uh, an apartment uh, or two, was actually running into a storm drain, which is uh, you know, counterintuitive. So, uh, so we actually had to, to construct a new uh, gravity sanitary line in Broadway to get, get to separate the storm drain. From the uh, from the sanitary waste, so we just don't know what we're going to find. But basically, by tracking in the same path that our predecessors have tracked, uh, we should be in uh, in pretty good shape because our conflicts would be already have been discovered. Okay. We want to move move on, uh, Mike. Same unit prices. Oh, yes, sir. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Right, I'm my name is Sal Grande. I'm from Calasso Pizza. My concern is always parking and. And the traffic pattern. Now we take care of the parking for the people who come from north side to south side. What about the other people who come from south to north? How do we? How are they going to come in? in the parking and sideways. After we look, oh, we look to put up uh, mm -hmm. one of those designated spaces on Lawyer's Row. Uh -huh. Okay, so that you'll catch it when you're when they're coming in. They could they could do that loop if they're coming uh, north round or southbound. They can come around. So they're going to be like right uh, uh, like. People from South Bond yeah, and the people sides. from North Bond, both sides. And, okay. yeah. and the, what about the speed limit in the town? It's 25. Yeah. Well, it's going to be slowed down or because it's a lot of people 25. Are going to, uh, our understanding is a problem, I guess, yeah. because yeah. a lot of people, they're not used to that. Yeah. So they're going to it's stop and they're going to go in. And I suggest 15 miles an hour. Yeah. It's a duo for at least first month. Yeah, the state. The, the 25 mile an hour. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a minimum state highway speed. And with Commerce and Liberty being a state highway, we have to adhere to their speed limit. Yeah, our town roads like Water Street, we have control over the town. Yeah. town Another question. Yeah. How about the, the second phase? Mm -hmm. We're going to notify the people who come in when Commerce Street is going to start the work. So we're going to stop both ends, or the people are going to be allowed to come the halfway through or uh, oh you mean on Commerce Street? Yes. Yeah. When we do Commerce Street, uh, what we have will be taking I better take the mic for yeah, a second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
Uh, when we do uh, Commerce Street, uh, and we actually start on that work, we'll be flipping the two-way traffic over onto Liberty Street. And in doing that, the same that applies on here will apply down here. All of these, uh, uh, except where we're working immediately, let's say, in front of your shop. Okay, when, uh, because there's uh, there's actually a sewer manhole right in front of your shop. So uh, when we're coming up through here, um, uh, everything behind us uh, will be open. Everything ahead of us will be open, just as it is on the other streets. So that if you're coming into town, you want to turn and come down to the town parking lot, and, and we're working in this area here, all that's accessible. You can come up to the new lot here, uh, and, uh, and, and effectively, uh, you'll be able to move through town uh, from both directions and even using uh, Liberty Street uh, where you can in order to, to get around uh, that area of construction. So that's the same plan that we would propose there. Mike, didn't you say last time that where they're doing the work, the actual Let's work, keep it they, in the front row. they have to close up at the end of the day. Um, so that'll... Yes. Yeah, we're required to close uh, all of it. It's a state road. So when, we, when we're working in a state road, uh, we either fill the trench completely up or we bring it up and put a plate over top of it and, uh, and uh, a steel plate. Uh, and uh, you probably see, I don't know if you looked around at some of the storage areas that we have. Uh, I think it's now uh, four, four new huge uh, steel plates that are uh, brought in specifically for this because we cannot leave the road open uh, or any open cut uh, on a state road. We have to close them all up. Uh, Mary Margaret, we wanted to go. No, Pat. Okay, all right. So my um my my first question was: is this Would you uh, introduce who you are and, and oh, kind of where you? My name is Dick Rodden. I live on Kidwell Avenue. Okay. Um, my first question was: uh, Is the statewide highway administration giving you a time frame for how long it's going to take them to do their portion after you guys are done with yours? Yeah. Uh, theirs is probably. Uh, they haven't told us specifically. They haven't told us specifically, and um, I can't really. Answer for the state highway. That's something that you need to ask them. I mean, are we It'll talking be about the same length as it was the last time they did this exact same work? Uh, and I think it was in a couple of days to mill mill the road first. Uh, and where where we've already been, uh, you know, is that we they won't have to mill, so it'll go quicker. Uh, and then uh, uh, when they come back to do the overlay, uh, that would be the second part. Uh, does anybody remember how long it took the last time they did it? Mm -hmm. It's pretty quick. It doesn't take much time. So we're talking it. days, not months, yeah, I guess is my point. Yeah, okay, that was, yeah. you know, it, I no, didn't no, even no. know exactly, yeah, but there's, there's a big yeah, there's differentiation. And it'll actually be a little bit less here because uh, one of the Thank things we're doing uh, with the, uh, in conjunction with State Highway Administration. You can't, you can't hold it. Something that's a little closer to you. Yeah. Sorry. And, and so my second part to that would be, I believe, what he was actually going to ask. And, you know, about the, the signage, you know, not necessarily directing people away from downtown, because I understand why as right. a business owner you wouldn't want to say, hey, don't come here. Right. Um, but is there a way to find a happy medium there so we're telling people who may be going all the way to Chestertown or just literally passing through that, eh, you might want to take somewhere other than here, because we've already, we've already made highway changes that have eliminated other things, like Rolling Bridge. Right. And so now we've forced people to go down 304 or to come up 213, and now we're going to congest 213. And so I'm watching my commute get bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> right. Um, right. So. so we're totally open to suggestions, right? When I was at that business meeting, one of the things that was said, and, and I know I, I've experienced it, is if you're going over to Annapolis and there's a Navy game or there's something going on in, in Annapolis, and you see that sign that says, you know, traffic, I will avoid it and I will just not go. And so that's a concern that we want to avoid, you know? And, and so I think we've got to figure out, is there a happy medium that we can uh, not deter potential customers away right. and also be sensitive to commuters. Yeah, it was through traffic and then there, 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 is, there is language we'll find that we understand the concerns of the citizens because they were very uh, vocal about it the last time and State Highway is uh, willing to work with us on whatever language it is, but it would be a digital display uh, for a while and then they would take it down. They, it's not their intention to keep it during the whole duration. It's, a, it's an education of the daily commuter. I think they have not yeah, there you go. Okay, that, that, right. A business, uh, and I think, you know, uh, businesses are open. You know, there's all kinds of stuff that they're willing to, uh, you know, business as usual downtown, you know, uh, you know, um, major construction, I think, uh, and uh, of course, permit vehicles, if they could seek another route. And, and of course, one of the things is the state, we, the state will not um, 
uh, detour onto, onto county roads. They only detour onto state roads, which is why some of the original plans we had just weren't functional. Uh, because we wanted to use Spaniard Neck Road and uh, and uh, Watson Road, uh, uh, both portions of which were county, were county roads. So yeah, that's that's we, yeah, we'll we'll find that language. Royce, Rory Sherman, um, Hope Road in Centerville Heights. I got two two questions. One concerns uh, more than once I've seen people come down, especially out of towners coming down Water Street, and they've got their nose glued to their GPS. And they're not paying any attention to the signage at all, and have actually gone across onto Water Street because of that. Has any thought been given to contact somebody within the GPS system to get that changed during the duration of this project? Yeah, I know Wave would do it because it's a social, because it's a social, not Wave, Waves. You could do it on Waves, but uh, and that probably would get get some of it. I don't know whether that would be something we could research. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure about the GPS. I know that I went on to Google the other day uh, because our parking lots are not were not mapped on Google, and I I put a couple of suggestions in, and I was able to actually put the number of parking spaces, for example, oh, really? the one on Happy Lady, yeah, on and all of a sudden it now came up. So it had to be approved. So I think that you know we can certainly uh, add some of those things to Google and see if they get uh, see if they get added. But it was relatively easy for me to do. The other side of your point is that people are not looking where they're going. And, uh, and one of the things that we did discuss was the possibility of, uh, I, and you've probably seen these. Um, for example, here we have stop bars that pull way back in the middle of the bank roughly, uh, and then up uh, pretty close to where the old shopping shop was on Water Street. Uh, we do directional arrows, and, uh, and those would be under our control, uh, where we, you could actually either have it lit, you know, a lit arrow to the stop bar. If people don't adhere to the stop bars, uh, then no traffic thing works. And right now, everybody just ignores the stop bars, and that's why we get congested where people are trying to make a turn, <clears throat> and they can't because people weren't sufficiently pulled back. So we have discussed the possibility of, of doing something rather than just a static arrow pointing down at the stop bar. And of course, El Jefe back there is going to be uh, uh, watching that too to see if we can patrol that in the, in the early going to get people indoctrinated properly. Which brings me to my second point. Yeah, let me. Uh, can I add something to your first one first? Sorry. Let me let me address your first one. Okay. Um, the nav system in my car, which is probably no different than navigation system in anybody's car, I noticed that it shows construction sites dynamically. So if the construction sites move or change day to day, my navigation system will show me where it is. I presume that SHA is feeding that information out, but we'll see if we can figure out how that gets on my screen and. Make sure that this does as well. Thank and you. You know what? The social side uh, under Waze, uh, you know, if you have that app, for example, that that does that does because people see it. You know, you the dead idea. deer in the road. Yep. Have to be plugged into your GPS for construction for it to show up. Yeah. Somebody's given the information to that system, I, 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 and I'll bet yeah. S H A does it. So. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, my second point was had to do with the stop lines. Um, I drive a. Uh, a large pickup truck. Okay, it's a dually. I can't make the turn. If somebody blows the, uh, the line there at yeah. Water Street, yeah. I can't make a turn off of yeah, Commerce on Water Street. Down with it. Yeah, right. And it happens time and time again. Yeah. And uh, the one of the solutions I was, I was looking at it today. Would there be any possibility of radiusing the sidewalk at that point? You only have to back about a foot and put a radius there, so you're not running up over the curb. Yeah, why don't go ahead. Uh, one problem with that, I mean, there's areas that we can do it, but there's areas that you're going to start uh, disrupting the ADA regulations. Handicap and accessibility. Your, yes, your handicap accessibility. Yeah. By narrowing that sidewalk, by interrupting the, um, the handicap ramps that feed to the street for the crosswalks, this, uh, this detour plan, if you would like to call it that, uh, or which it is, was designed by Traffic Concepts. Uh, they're an engineering firm that that's all that they do. They, they engineer detours. They, they have programs to plug all of the information in to make sure that... They, they contacted the Goodwill, Goodwill fire, uh, fire Company to find out what equipment they have, and they actually build the stop bar based on our local fire equipment and tractor trailer driving 
that may or happen to make that turn. That's why these things are way, way back. See, right now, you park right out at the edge of this corner. Somebody's swinging around and used to going toward the bank side, right? Uh, but he's going to be coming into on, oncoming traffic. So the, uh, the stop bar situation here, uh, you know, we pull all of that back so that you come all the way around, you'll have extra distance to get your pickup around back into the proper lane. If you look at the curbs there at uh, Water Street and Commerce, mm -hmm. they're black. <laughs> with rubber. Oh, yeah. They got more yeah. rubber there than they yeah. do in a street. Well, I'll tell you, we did the same thing. They had the same problem at Kidwell. Uh, everybody ran, yeah. a, ran that, a curb that, at Kidwell. That's everybody a good ran. And uh, when, we, when we were able to redesign that, we, we widened those, you probably know, we yeah. widened those radiuses, double, them, run over. double the radius at least. And I haven't seen them, people running over them uh, like they used to in the past. So that's one of the things we were able to, able to do in that project. But that was specifically a sidewalk uh, um, rest, uh, you know, redo nice of the whole sidewalk. Like you know, yeah. a, it is an issue, not necessarily just for me. Yeah. Even no, yeah. people. Sure. But the, the other thing is that uh, if you notice around town within, uh, I believe it's about six years, State Highway came in and put the, the handicap yeah, accessible ramps. ramps in and they de redid their curbs and stuff at the intersections. Yeah. Uh, the back corner, well, the this problem is, is that, that that curve is a SHA's property yep. and they only have a certain width of right of way so they're not going to go beyond their right of way in a few small areas where they're going to have to go purchase more right of way but Town they're going to next we can do it but there again like we say this is not uh, necessarily a street project this is a water and sewer infrastructure project and at some point it's going to be street we hope. Yeah, yeah, we hope it is, yeah. So. Now, overall, it's going to be, the only thing is done, it's going to be the same as now, or are they going to change anything else? Oh, the street? The street. It's going to be they'll, all flip back to, they'll all flip back to one way. When it's done, they'll all go when back to done, the way. They'll go back to the way it is now. Right. I'll still have my parking. I'll put it this yeah. way. That, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the plan. The, that's the plan right now. As I said earlier, you know, we have a schedule and we have a plan. All of this will change as a progress, uh, as the project goes through its processes and pro progresses on. So, um, And we'll be checking with the police uh, department to make sure if we're having, if, we're, if certain areas show up to be completely unsafe or if some of the changes that we've made are really viable, uh, that's something that the chief will be able to uh, to advise us on later on when, when we make these shifts back to original conditions. Yeah, you'll have parking out in front of your place. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Nikki? My name's Nikki Pino, I'm co-owner of an Optical Galleria, and I have to say the more I sit here, um, the more I'm disturbed by the conversation because there are so many unknowns that are taking place that had this been, had a public meeting been called a year ago, so many of this, so much of this information would have been worked out. I realize it wasn't, and I see you guys all in a tailspin and trying to answer questions that you don't know the answers to. And that's the big concern, is because this project has started. Um, even as of December 18th or 19th, a tree trimming day. Well, that, you know, nobody was supposed to park on Commerce Street. Guess what? Nobody knew they weren't supposed to park on Commerce Street businesses or, you know, I don't know who knew, the few people who saw the post on Facebook. So people had to rotate employees out, move their cars. I brought you guys a picture of John and Karen Harper's house who were kind enough to let the contractors park in their driveway that day. It is, and it will impede on residents every day. And my pet peeve, pet peeve again, is I'm not trying to be compatible compatible battle with you guys. I'm trying to work together with you guys because the success of this project means the success of this community. That's all I have to say. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> have you guys spoken to um, subsurface engineers to know what is under the ground that the unknown? Have you guys contracted any subsurface engineers? Yeah, we uh, before we can do anything in a in a state road, uh, all of the existing utilities are painted out. Okay, mm -hmm. they're all marked. We know where our utilities are. Mm -hmm. What we don't know is where electric is, where cable is, and this is what your uh, your your uh, 
subsurface uh, um, utility and Yeah, they can tell you where everything is within about. 500 so, yeah. of an inch. So what they do is mm -hmm. they go through and mark every one of those out uh, prior to our construction. Now, a lot of times they'll just paint uh, paint the utility on the right. road. You've seen it a million times on mm -hmm. sidewalks and whatever. Um, and when we're working out in the field, uh, it's not always viable, for example, for us to do all of Liberty Street because by the time we get down to the other end, it's gone. So where our utility contractors, uh, the utility locators, uh, and Miss Utility will come in uh, in phases right, to stay constantly ahead of us. Now, because we're replacing the lines in the existing locations and not in new locations, uh, we don't have the uh, SE, uh, the uh, subsurface oh, no. utility engineering that normally would be done for a, a new project. Okay. Yeah, uh, would, mm -hmm. would be because you don't. We're not running in a, through an exist, uh, following an existing track. Mm -hmm. In other words, the existing water line is where it is. Right. So the conflicts that uh, that the uh, uh, utility subsurface usually locates is utilities where you don't know where the conflicts are going to be. So, for example, if we had a water line. Uh, that we, we wanted to build at a certain grade, uh, and it, we didn't know that it was going to conflict with the storm drain. That's what they would locate. Gotcha. Uh, we already know where the storm drains are, and we know where the utilities are, and we're following the exact lines. Okay. So the, that part of it is, is, uh, is clear. The part that's always unclear is the uh, um, utilities that come down off of poles, you know, electric, uh, cable, um, uh, fiber, fiber optic. And, uh, and the, that sort of thing, and those are all located as we go. So we are staying ahead of that. Okay, and another major concern is that fortunately this community has a very healthy, independent, older generation, people between the age of 70 and 100. I gave Kip a map, I sent it to Tim last week, it's simple. Draw some diagrams on it, get, make copies of it, distribute to the library, to S Symphony Village, to businesses, so when people come in, we can explain, we'll take the time to explain what's going on, because right now, still half the community doesn't have a, have a clue. So stage one of this project, what should have been communication. Right now, that's not doing so well. So. Give us confidence some way that you guys are going to make this project a success. I see things happening, and we do appreciate you working with us. But again, we hear one thing, by the time we see it, it has changed. So we're not establishing a good trust relationship either. Do you? Because sure. I personally have a, you know, I'm passionate about this community. Yeah. And it's not personal, but I will stick up for the people. Thank you. Yeah, I have the great advantage of living on one of the streets that's going to get turned. So, yeah, so we're we're going to work it out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I appreciate your comment about the, uh, you know, uh, uh, reaching out to. And I was just talking to Joe earlier about uh -huh. it, to Symphony Village in Northbrook and getting making sure that they're all brought up to speed if they haven't been. But, yeah, but as we know where parking is, especially for us old guys, uh, we'll find a way to, uh, to to get that out on our website and make it back. Is confusing. No. It's an engineering drawing. It's there for you. Yeah. Mark it up. Yeah. I'll okay. give you another copy. So right. just, just to add to that, I did reach out to Symphony Village Homeowners Association yeah. uh, and the board of directors to you know, say, hey, I'm available to make a presentation. I'll come down in multiple groups. I'll come down at once, you know, Perfect. whatever you want. They came back to me and they too. said, we're good right now. We, don't, right. we don't need it. And again, everybody should not be scrambling now. Six months ago, had this been presented, we could have all worked together. These details would have been worked out. It's Christmas. Half, you know, th this room would be jam-packed if it wasn't four days before Christmas. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just, the whole thing wasn't fair to drop this on us now. It's done, it's over with. Let's move forward, let's work together, and make it a success. Yeah. Okay, thanks, thank you. First thing I wanna address is the no parking on commerce. That was, not, Whoever told you that was not right. Okay. Okay. The day before, my crews went out and put temporary no parking signs at 14 addresses on the parking spaces that where the tree trimming company had to work at. Mm -hmm. They put flyers on the vehicles there. This was before 3.30 that this happened. At 7.30 the next morning, when I came in and I went to meet the contractor to discuss the, the project with him, the roads were still, the parking spaces were still pretty clear. There was a few parking in front of the restaurant. 
don't upset us because they're not going to be there all day. Mm -hmm. What happened was at 8.30 when they started to move into town and by 9 o'clock they got to the third address and I counted six addresses up Commerce Street that people were parking right next to the temporary no parking sign. Mm -hmm. At that point I called the police department. I said, hey, please try and find out who these folks are and let them know we're trying to trim. It won't be all day. As soon as the, the crew goes past, the parking opens up again. So whoever told you that all the commerce was shut down for parking, that was not true. That's truthful. communication. Good to know. Yeah, yeah. But so, it has to be out there somehow. I, and like I said, the day before, we put temporary no parking signs out. We handed out flyers for those areas. It was only 14 addresses for the length of commerce. Now, I did you go know, and talk to... Disruptive. <coughs> yeah, I understand. That's but, the whole thing was. And I went and talked to Rick Leonard about it because a lot of his people were the ones that were parking on the Right. Road. And not and, all of them yeah. had to move. That was the right. problem. Yeah, it's so just parking, no parking it sign was pretty right specific there. to where the trees were. But yeah. Again, this little simple task. Sure. Look what happened there, and that's what we need to avoid. Yeah, we'll and, try. We'll try. You know, that's why we're all talking, and, and you guys got to implement the ideas and and somehow make them work. And the problem is, you guys just don't have a lot of time to do it. The, you know. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to address. This work at the Harper House is not even our contractor. It was a contractor working at the Harper House that day. Ah, oh, well, that's so, good to know too. And um, because I can tell you that when I was going through with the contractor, okay. Johnson Tree Service was oh. the ones doing the work there. Yeah, not Bartlett. We yeah. used Bartlett Tree. Okay, well, good. Glad so, you cleared that up. Yeah, <laughs> there's many. We'll, we'll, we'll try to get it. <laughs> there's many issues like that that are. Give us a call. Or yeah, and stumbling yeah. blocks yeah. all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Just give us a call. Just call me and, and we'll, we'll work with you on the well, I'll be going to the parking. Where are the contractors? <laughs> do they have a designated parking spot? Contractors will be working on the street. Who's the yeah. contractor? The only time, that's metallic. The only time that they would park anywhere other is if they're, like, for example, when they were well, meeting on the to discuss the lights right down in the middle of town, you know, normally they would park. They'll be at the site. They'll be at the site. Yeah, yeah. We don't have, uh, they won't be taking any of the public parking. Uh, they've been, they've been uh, 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 good about that on the other streets that we've used, uh, that we've done so far, and uh, that'll be the case here. Uh, when we're in that middle phase of meeting with the signal contractors and some other stuff, they may have right. parked in some public spaces. But, from here on out, they'll be working on the street itself. All right, do you want to move on, Bob? Do you have yeah, a uh, comment? Yeah, Bob Pino on Optical Galleria. Uh, last meeting, we spoke about the signs, and um, uh, Mike, you know, was saying um, to the effect, stay away from Centerville, that type of thing. And then we, I just about had a heart attack. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we said, we, I thought it was pretty clear that we were not going to do the no through traffic you know we still want people to come through and do business and then I get this uh, flyer in my mail um, and it says uh, traffic will be closed through traffic only okay so when you're reading that in the bolder print you know everybody that lives in the uh, was it 617 area code that got this you know way out to Ingleside and stuff like that they look at that and they say well, hell I'm not going there that's gonna be a pain in the butt I'm just gonna go someplace else and do my business so this is, you know, that's really bothering me, and it just, when I saw this come through, it, it, it made me think of uh, somebody, uh, I think it was President Reagan, said the uh, scariest words is, that somebody has is, I'm from the government and I'm here to help, yeah, yeah. okay? This yeah, is, yeah. And I think the language, the language on that was, was meant to be directed through, to, through traffic only, not local uh, business, you know. I know. But, so that was actually a change from what our original thought was, which was to, which the state had at first mentioned, which was what, what we had mentioned at the previous meeting. Yep. So that was actually, that was actually an attempt to fix that. But well, what I think Tim is looking for is language, any kind of language, because the digital board, you can put a lot of well, load on it. Perception's reality. This, yeah. people are gonna perceive, I'm not going to Centerville because it's gonna be a pain yeah. in the butt, okay? Um, during the, you know, you could open for business, uh, during construction, thank you for your patience. Right. Parking added. You know, those right. six or seven little words right there will, you know, bring people into town, you know. 
that whole uh, that project out there that Nikki worked on, the uh, overpass project, mm -hmm. that whole project could have been stopped if there was a nest of the Delmarva fox squirrel. Sure. Okay, could have been stopped because it's an endangered species. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> you well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mom and pop, mom and, <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time it's being reading it out. Of mom and pop shops, <laughs> mom and pop shops like Sal's, yeah. like a lot of the sh shops downtown, are becoming an endangered species. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want to go that way. No. You know, I mean, we're we're seriously a mom, mom. Mom and pop shop. Okay, my employees live in town. They work in town, and they're scared to death. You know that this is going to kill business so much that we're going to have to move out of town. They got kids. They don't want to move out of town. I don't want to move out of town. But we still got to be able to do business. So I just wanted to point out, you know, that we got to get this thing right. Uh, the one last question was uh, the new lot down here at the corner. Yeah. Uh, will it be metered? Because if there's one thing our town does not do well is meter enforcement because people park in front of my store all day. They come out and they beat the uh, police officer when he's coming in and they think it's a big joke. Well, it's not a big joke because those five and six and nine spaces in front of my store are there to be flipped so they can go to Edwards, so they can come to my store, they can go to other places. And it's just not done. I mean, I watch people park there all day, and I think that the new lodge, there should be meters on some of the spots, it's maybe half, I don't know, to make up for the other ones that we're losing yeah, we're on Water Street. We're a handicapped spot there because we never had a legal handicapped spot on Water Street. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we got a full width spot right there in the first one that you get to. So I think that's a discussion that, uh, that you can have with the chief. Uh, to see about that, but that makes sense. We and we understand that, and that was the issue with uh, that we we talked about when we when we were working with uh, Sal's issue about the restaurant pickups. Too. Okay, and well, I want to make this very public. Okay, and I want to make sure it's legal. Okay, <laughs> if this job gets done in 18 months, I will buy all of you guys. A steak dinner, either at Sal's place <laughs> or at all shops or whatever. Well, I'll take you all out to dinner if it gets done on time. That sounds like well, looking okay. damages to me. I'm there down. we go. Uh, we'll take that challenge, right? We'll make sure Retallick comes because he can eat three of those steaks for you. On that line, are we going to be able to drive all the way through the parking lot? Yeah, the drive, the access to that parking lot comes off of Water Street. Okay, and uh, and that's and there's an egress easement of only nine feet up on Liberty Street. No, but will they be able to go all the way to Edwards? Uh, not at this time. Uh, the owner of the property over here uh, didn't feel appropriate to open that at this point. We're still talking, so we don't know. I think one of the biggest things to bring up is this is a good time for the businesses to talk to their employees and let them know they need to help out too. You can't park in front of your shop or Sal's shop or anything like that. I understand that you want to be as close as you can. The weather's not going to be really nice, but you need to look out for the people that are coming to do business for you because they're the ones that pay the salary. So you got to let them know they're going to have to park on the outskirts somewhere. I think that's the biggest thing well, you get across. That's part of enforcement too, because we can let them know, but people will blow us off. But if, if they start getting tickets, you know, even if it's ten bucks, it's still that's a pain, and they'll, you know, the courthouse. Hey, I've been parking at the courthouse. My truck's there right now. There's plenty of spaces over there. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. I've been trying to park in different spots just, just to, to see to how. Explore. Yeah, just to yeah. explore them. Yeah, that's a good idea. And I think any boss, that would be a good thing for you to do because we, we had the same discussion with Edwards. And Anil thought that if he could go on the second deck, his people, that he wants to keep all his people together in the so same spot. So they all yeah. walk out together safely. And, uh, and so that there's no uh, preferential treatment to any one individual over another. Everybody gets the same, everybody gets the same walk. So that's a great thing to do. I, I applaud you for that because that's a businessman's decision. So right now the meters are limited, the meter enforcement. Sorry, yeah, it follows up to his question. I know, but we, I, I really, I don't want to keep going back and Give forth. If we have an opportunity, have an opportunity to, to speak. We will be stepping up the enforcement. So, you want to, your turn? Yeah. I'm Spade Storm. There is an elephant in the room. Not, not me necessarily, but I, I put up with what happened on Kidwell. And one of the things that I, that I am discouraged by, and I think everybody here needs to be aware of it, we had our water shut off numerous times without warning. We had our water frozen 
left with the lines exposed. And I even, and it, and it was a couple because it happened further up the street as well. Um, one particular morning, they let us know the evening before that we're going to shut your water off tomorrow. And uh, we were leaving um, uh, to head down to, to El Salvador. And we said, hey, listen, is there any way that you can wait and let us have breakfast and do one last load of laundry? And oh, sure, not a problem. At 6 o'clock, our water was shut off. The other thing that was probably, so a lot of these things did occur. And we were promised that they would not occur. And we were promised that we would have good communication. Um, I don't think I ever let an expletive loose or anything like that. I was always reasonably. Uh, not in English. Uh, no. Yeah. In Espanol, no hay problema para mí. So I, I might have said a few. Anyway, um, so the, the other difficulty was is that as you sectioned the lines, a lot of debris got in the lines. They were connected back up. And I was told, of course, you're not going to have debris getting into your, your lines, your water lines in your house, because you've got a filter at your meter. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, that's a boatload of crap. So if you hear that from somebody, and I don't care who it is, you could look in the tanks in our toilets, and you could see the sand and the grit in there. Now, I understand that a certain amount of that is going to be introduced. But at the same time, with your toilets, and I ended up buying them in the contractor packs, which were 10 at a time. Okay? I would replace the stems on my toilets because the grit would get up into the top. It would prevent it from shutting off all the way. You know how you have the little float in there? It would prevent it from shutting off all the way. And then your water bill goes up. Now, to be told that it doesn't occur when it does occur is, is disconcerting. And you weren't there all the time, Mike. And, and every time Mike was there, I was able to speak to him about this. But to be told flat out, oh, this doesn't happen, and you're like, OK, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this just for giggles um, because I want to replace these stems. It, it, it wasn't necessarily fair. We didn't know exactly. And I understand that stuff happens, that there are certain times when in where we were. Um, now, do you have concrete that you're going to have to remove in the roads? Uh, we're, we're anticipating concrete. OK. Except well, we're not going to be busting it out the way we did before. Yeah, next to my house, they picked them up with the excavator 10, 15 feet off the ground and dropped them on the other chunks of concrete. And my wife's um, heirlooms came off of the little shelves on the walls. And we scrambled as fast as we could to try and rescue those. That was very disconcerting because some of that stuff were gifts that she had been given and gifts that I had bought her. And she was in tears. So some of these things, then to be told that, well, we're saving money. You know, we can save a million bucks by breaking it up this way. Well, OK, buy my house. <laughs> you know, you know, but that's, that's just not and cool. In, in this case, we're actually, we're actually cutting the sections uh, for the actual <coughs> utility. That we're doing. So be, if it's a water main, it would be a four foot section, right which, we're, which we're zipping and going to actually grind it up and lift it. So I guess, the, I guess the big question yeah. then is, Will the pipes be exposed when it's frozen, and will they be left exposed? Because I did say something to Miles and a couple of the guys. I go, hey, dude, you leave that exposed. It's going to freeze tonight. No, 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 I won't get that cold. Well, 28 yeah. did, the, did the trick, you know? So I will be careful on that. I, I remember that. I remember coming down uh, when you had that issue with your, you know, point going under the, on, under the fence there. Yeah. yeah. But any of those that, so use your phone. Have them in speed dial. And I think, and I definitely think that he'll answer. I, I, I do. But understand that if you have trouble with your, if your toilets aren't shutting off and that's running, then there's probably sediment that's gotten into there. By the time you try and flush that out to get it out of the stem, you might as well replace it because it's a 50-50 shot whether or not it's going to work. But that was a huge aggravating thing. I, I, I did it at least, I used all 10. I think I used 12 altogether by the time I was done. So anyway. Now what we try to do is if we're replacing that, we'll go up. I know uh, Royce, uh, we go out to the <coughs> side of your house with your permission. Open up a, a hydrant on the side of your house, your yard hydrant, your uh, house hydrant, and try to blow it out through the, through the house hydrant before it actually gets there. So right. we do make an attempt to try to get any residual. Ooh. Yeah, loop. Well, okay. and the other thing is make sure that you support local businesses. As someone who's got a business downtown on the city dock in Annapolis, every time they do one of these major projects, it knocks the crap out of us. Yeah. And it's just like you have to kind of put yourself in these people's positions. You go without a paycheck. 
okay? You, honestly, you do. You got a mortgage to pay, you might have a kid in college. I got six kids, seven grandkids. You know, you have obligations, you have responsibilities, and you kind of, it's hard when you don't get the opportunity to plan for it well in advance and stick extra money in the bank or whatever, but whatever you do, stay loyal to the local businesses, and no matter how much crap it is, just suck it up and, and let's, let's do business with them. Thank you. So, uh, Matt Frank, 108 Liberty Street. Um, I guess I don't understand one element. This end right here, right there, 108 South. Yeah. So, um, water sewer. Are you doing the lines to and from the homes too? Yeah, we're, no, no, we're going down no. the street and picking up wherever your line meets <coughs> in the, uh, the town utilities. Uh -huh. So, the property owner is responsible. I know, like Liz, you know, Bryce, for example, I have a hell of a time. First coming out to the street. So where, where we come to is just past the sidewalk uh, where we'll, we'll intercept the existing line. And we may get to a situation where we open that line up and, and you go out there and you say, oh my God, you know, I have a, if it's a water line, I have a galvanized water line right. completely corroded. Or if I, yeah, if I were what roots in your, in your, uh, in your sanitary, because it's probably old the orange bird or maybe even terracotta pipe, uh, we, we can't go beyond that point. That's private on that point. But everything from there down, instead of using a four inch, we've been using six inch sanitary laterals. So that, you know, instead of the old four, uh, normally you use a four inch going to your house and uh, all, all of the projects that we've done so far and our intent on this project is to use the six inch water main, I mean sewer lateral to, to connect to your probably four inches, what I would guess you have coming out of your house. So if it's in terracotta, we make an adapter to that line. So that's sewer out, what about water in? Water, water coming will come to the meter. Uh, if we have to, if the meter is out, uh, I think you're, you have brick walk in front of your house. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If you have that, then uh, and and you have a meter is actually in that, uh, we would relocate that to behind the sidewalk. Our goal is to get hydrants and the uh, um, um, water meters uh, and for that matter sanitary cleanouts behind the sidewalks. That way, when you come to them. Uh, with your own private work, whenever that might be, you won't have to run the additional expense of tearing up the sidewalks to get back out to the street. Sure. Um, question that my wife asked me to ask, Pigeon, that goes off of uh, what Faith had said, and that is just, um, <clears throat> I'm following my orders here. Yes, the homes are old, there's old stuff in them. She wants to make sure we don't end up with a broken house, a broken foundation, and broken stuff in the homes. So I've said that. Okay. Um, the other thing, when the state comes through, might there be any opportunity there to look at traffic calming measures so that 25 is 25? Because I know from my backyard when these two lights right. are green. Right. Right. That's all. Right. We, might have an we might have an opportunity there. I think you actually, uh, you may, we, uh, the chief may have answered that uh, with, uh, when he allowed parking from, uh, lives from Fayette down to the church, the church alley, but the uh, incidence of speeding reduced significantly. Mm -hmm. The opportunity exists to create parking uh, in, when we flip back to the one-way scenario, mm -hmm. so that you have parking on both sides of the road. And the chief's experience down there was, and I think, Ms. Miner, is she here? Yeah. yeah, I think that that, that compressing that traffic uh, does, the, does yeah. the same effect. Yeah, even, off, even off the things chief, with chief the paints, you know, thing. Well, whatever, yeah, well, uh, whatever whatever the was, it was really the parking issue that the chief had mentioned to us that he thought was, uh, that's a possibility, it's up to the town we council. We still have the big Oh, we do, sure we do. Yeah, we have the big trucks, but we're talking, you know, in terms of the speed, the speed is generally deterred. And doesn't seem to phase the middle. Really? It has, it has come around that corner. Yeah. What provisions have you made to dissuade the trucks from coming through? I think this is an opportunity to do this if you're smart enough and can talk back to State Highway and tell them why, you know, why aren't you going to, or are you going to notify the tra traffic that there will be construction work going on? Yep. That How was... about John Powell Road? Shouldn't they be directed? You're saying that the yeah. town table let you use? Yeah. It would go to 319 or, uh, or 305. But the, those are the, those are the all of that was the whole purpose of starting with that. For the signs to go out. out there, right? 
to permit to ask. But now to find the businesses don't want signs, so you won't have that's, it. That's what we're hearing. Well, um, I'm voting for some sort of a sign to let trucks know that there's. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be sure. a mess. Those are yeah, huge tractor trailers. And they, they had looked at going at church between Churchill and Centerville, and also out on on two thirteen to put signs out on the, that area. But Who's putting I think that, that was the state highway's original proposal. Original, us. but not yeah. now. Well, I don't know. Bob came up with some great language. Maybe the language can be just added. You know, we can work with them to see if there's a compromise on that. So they, that permit traffic, permit uh, truck, uh, tractor trailer vehicles are. Uh, are just waiting to find well, we route. get ditch and valve. Yeah. You have all those okay. and big through trucks. Right. Just set a fake DOT truck. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> a fake police car again, like you're doing on 301. Yeah, okay, thank you, I mean. uh, My name is Caleb Hammer. I'm up off uh, Burrisville Road, just north of Centerville. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and just following off of the, the question about the signs, and granted, I just came back into town, so I'm not completely uh, up to speed on the issue. But um, we're talking about signs that are being put up, well, uh, sorry, that are, that are being proposed to be put up during the construction, correct? Uh, and which is starting January 2nd, you said? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if there, if there is a push to go through with new language, new talk about perhaps say there's still parking available and there's still right. a lot mm -hmm. of local availabilities in Centerville to not dissuade people from going through. Um, would it be possible to perhaps get some of those signs up next week uh, or do something uh, in regards to sort of easing the stress off the uh -huh. initial, because uh, from what I understand, there's a big, uh, there's a communication gap between um, especially the commuters and the the, right. the, the trucks who are going to be uh, yeah, moving through a lot. It, could there be an, uh, a notion to move to push something for next week, set things up that say, hey, during starting this date, yeah. uh, we can move through, but still a lot, use the similar language that's like local traffic, et cetera, et cetera. And that, to answer your question, that was the original plan of okay. the state highway to actually, they would have been up a week ago okay. out on the outer edges of town. Uh, that was kind of up in the air with them as far as when they were going to go up. That's when they had hoped to put them up. Uh, the problem was that they had their traffic signs uh, dealt to other projects. Uh, they were going to be able to get a few up, but then when we started hearing the concerns about that right. was the language that was going to be on it, right. uh, okay. road construction, Centerville, something to the effect of uh, Please find alternate it's routes that the businesses. Right. That's, that's their standard. It, it, it's that's more their, so the issue of like deterring. Right. We don't yeah. want to deter people. Right. From exactly. Right. right. Okay. Gotcha. But the uh, but there again, it's back to the point that that was what they were set to do, and a stop was put on that. Okay. In answer to the. We can work the language out. I think we we'll get it up there question. as quickly as. Yeah. We can. yeah. That's, that's, that's what, what Bob was yeah. saying is. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. That's good. 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 I, Please remember, this is a, even though this is the town of Centerville's water and sewer lines, this is a multi-agency project. It, there's so many other agencies uh, that are involved in this, uh, just so that we can get our water and sewer replaced. Good evening. Uh, my name is Darby DiStefano. I, too, live off of Burrisville on Green Farm Lane. Um, I'm speaking to you tonight because as a resident of Queen Anne's County, uh, I was a 2013 graduate of Queen Anne's County High School and I'm currently a 5 out of 5 biomedical engineering student. Um, during my college career, I've served on my student government on a member, an eight member committee where we manage about a million dollars for nine month periods at a time. Um, I'm telling you this so you may understand why I look young and inexperienced. I have a working understanding of the complexities of capital improvements, competition, and the critical need for communication to ensure the success of any project. I enjoy the opportunity to give back to the community through service, like the people sitting before us and everyone in this room. Um, being just a small part of the overpass project, I have been keenly aware for the need that exists in Centerville for um, members to step forward and speak their minds with integrity. Um, that is why I stand before you tonight. Uh, it's a blessing to live in Centerville. I have walked these streets for haircuts, to pick up prescriptions, to buy a pack of gum, to start a savings account, 
to have lunch or to buy a birthday gift with my allowance. Um, one of those I can remember is a failed business now today, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, as I have grown, I've asked many businesses for donations for fundraisers to support our athletic teams and our academic endeavors. Never has any business in this town ever told me no or any of my peers. These small businesses are generous and I understand that every donation and every sales transaction that goes through these businesses are essential. Uh, many of these businesses have elderly uh, patrons that have long standing appointments that are longer standing than I've been able to walk across the street. Um, many of my friends, while they graduate now, they're moving on to their next best thing and that's always out of state and out of town, working for the government, for startups, and it's always the same. I've known that my next best thing is here, and I'm looking forward to see how the older community or the older generations before me are looking forward to build that for the millennials, for the kids in schools right now. Uh, and I think that each one of these businesses has represented tonight the generosity and support of the community. And that's what I challenge those before you on the town council. You need to form a clear vision of what it means to serve our businesses and our future better, because it's your responsibility. And also, a side note, I hear a lot of Facebook tonight. Everyone's communicating through Facebook. Like, I'm millennial, social media. No, it doesn't work like that. You need to knock on the doors, talk to your constituents, talk to your peers, because word of mouth is the safest route. And you know, looking at the postcard, that was a really egregious error. If we collaborated, we could have prevented this whole issue, and we really had an opportunity to you know, make a really gr expose our town even more for this project. Um, thank you. Wow. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to try to sound positive and follow that. My name is Julie DiStefano, and I live on Burstall Road, and this is my daughter. Hmm. When I passed through Centerville many years ago, I asked myself, what does it take to live in a place like that? Now, many years later, I can tell you what it takes. It takes a husband who gets up at 2.30 every morning and drives the Beltway. You know what that does? That makes me rely on these small businesses, and that's why I'm here, because I got a postcard yesterday. A postcard that had I known, had they known, you could have planned better. You could have done better by these people. They're circling the wagons four days before Christmas. I've watched your faces. I've seen you avert your eyes. I've seen you smile. I've watched you listen to these gentlemen with greater respect than you listen to these folks. Let me tell you something. They shouldn't have had to circle the wagons. You should have circled the wagons. You should have held them within your circle. You should have listened, and you should have gone forward. My question to you is, did you put this project out to bid? I wonder. It's not rocket science. It's engineering. There are older towns with smaller streets. We've seen it done a million times. You can listen to other people who come in and bid. They'll give you different ideas. They'll give you different views. Ultimately, you make your choice. But in listening to others outside of our community, you can get a greater idea of how you can serve this business community. And the last question I want to ask you, did you know today that one of your business owners was looking at another place in Talpa County to move their business? Is that what you want to do? because you're not helping me, and you're not helping the future citizens of this community. Thank you. I want to make one comment, if I can. Please, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to sit here and tell you there won't be problems with this project, there won't be problems with traffic or anything. Anybody that tells you that on a project of this size is not, does not have you in their best interest. This project was put in my five-year capital budget plan, not for this year, but for three years down the road from now. What kind of prompted this thing to come forward so fast <coughs> is state highways budget got approved to repave <coughs> Centerville, Commerce and Liberty Street, okay? The last time that they paved in here, the same day they paved, our crews were out repairing water leaks because the line was that bad. That's why the roads are so rough through here. We were 
truly afraid that if we said, you know, we have no problem, go ahead and pave the road, we would wind up with the same exact problem again. The other, on the other hand, if we told them, yeah, we want to do this project, we want to replace our water and sewer, but it's going to take three more years to have everything in place, that they could pull the funding and divert it somewhere else. And when that happens, state budgeting is not very quick to come back and revisit the same project that it had just approved the year before. That in itself is what drove this project so much faster than anybody would have ever truly loved to have had it. What was the project ever put out? The, <coughs> the, it was yeah. in the newspaper. It was but, made public. This particular project piggybacked on the kid. Yes, no. yes, this project piggybacked on the con or the uh, Kidwell project. That project was put out to bid, all in items. It was not a lump sum bid. By putting it out to bid in items, you can pick and choose out of that project where you spend the money. That was bid out two years ago. The contractor agreed to use the same item pricing for this project. So yes, the project was put out to bid two years ago, and this was an addendum to it. This happens all the time. State contracts, not just little Centerville contracts. Caroline, do you want to? Sorry. Caroline Huddleston, 305 South Liberty. Um, I actually grew up in downtown Annapolis, and I went there today to do some shopping. Um, two specialty items that I had to get down there. I don't know what they're doing down there. There's some construction going on, and it's, it's small. It's on the side streets. But I circled around there to get to these two shops three times, and finally I just said, forget this. And I left, and I pulled my car over, and I bought those items on Amazon. And I couldn't even shop at those local shops. And that project, whatever they're doing, I guess they're doing sidewalks or something. Main street, so probably yeah, there was crap everywhere. And I know every illegal spot there. And I, can, I know every, every alley. I know where to park down there. I grew up there. And I couldn't even use those. So I had to basically drive away and um, pull my car over and went to Amazon for it, which is a shame. And I, I think that's going to happen here 10 times worse. So it's concerning. But um, I did have a couple of questions um, as to the parking on the corner of Liberty and Water that the, I guess it's the 12 spaces. Is there a way to restrict that during the day so that can be just customers for the businesses on Water Street and not the bank employees? That was the rationale for, for uh, I think, the prior question, can we put uh, metered parking in? Oh, is that what they were talking? I'm sorry, I thought they were talking about over on the other way. Okay. Kim, is there signage that you could put there? Since I it's guess we could, that's something that we can we can look at. I think the council would have to decide about the parking in there too. But uh, but because it's a temporary lot, you know, um, if we put it for customers only or some kind of designation, that may be a fair way to go. Because like Bob said, you know, uh, you know, most businesses will try to get their employees out of the out of the way. Of I mean, the biggest the biggest offender has always been the bank. Is someone working with the bank to see about their employees? I know they've downsized somewhat. Um, they used to take up almost a whole lot. Oh know, yeah, so. yeah, they were everywhere. Um, so those were the main offenders. I'm just wondering if you couldn't just. I don't know if the meters are necessary because they actually just go out and feed them, as as someone else had mentioned, but. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And they kind of got out of that, I think, because the uh, um, uh, clerk kind of laid the law down on that. Okay. I mean, but some signage might help, and if not, I don't know that meters yeah. really well, we help. See what's the what, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. yeah. I understand your question. I mean, is that going to be available for people on South Liberty in the evening, though? Or I mean, where like I'm on 305, right. am I supposed to? I have three cars. Um, and a motorcycle, and I can only fit the two cars in the motorcycle. That's yeah, my husband. Uh, in front of your house? Um, in the parking, we have a straight line parking right now. 
just to get the second car out. Um, yeah, my husband's probably parked on the front lawn. Yeah. Yeah. During during construction, the uh, the parking on the street will remain where it is, and the parking uh, during construction until we get right in front of your house. That's what we're trying to tell you. Okay. So, so we're trying to keep that fluid, so that we're only moving uh, and disrupting as we go. Okay. But the main point is just to is to is to get that um, um, through traffic moving away from the construction site, so we can go back. Okay. So. When you say it's going to be nine months per street, um, is that kind of divided up the nine months between phase one and phase two? Yeah, nine months is for the full run of Liberty Street and the full run of Trump right. Street. Even I mean, but the, the, even we have to do, it two, do you think the phases are going to be divided in half is what I'm trying to say? Yeah, like they four, have to be. Because the, uh, the center goes, uh, <coughs> not surprisingly, the downtown center is the highest point in the town. Right. So all of our what, what wastewater goes to the south pump. No, I meant time-wise. Yeah. So it's divided now. We're going to be doing it in sections, and the sections are roughly equal. Okay. So there'll be four separate, separate sections. Okay. So I can expect the most disruption for four and a half months instead of mm, not nine even, months. Because we're not going to be working in front of your house for four months. We'll be working in front of your house for several days. Okay. Uh, and the rest of the traffic for, for you and me and my wife and everybody else, and for your neighbors, uh, we'll come and go as we do right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, the and, problem and area apparently is right in front of my house from what I've heard. <laughs> I mean, in the past, it's been the problem area, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and yeah. like in the evening as well, they're going to have to put steel plates yeah, and make yeah, it yeah, passable. Yeah, nothing's so. plated, but you can park on the street during the evening. Okay. And if we're right in front of your house, you'll get a notice from the town that we'll be working in front of your house that day. Okay. Um, and the other question is, with the, the laterals, um, and I don't have the terminology down right, I'm sure, but the laterals come into my water main that would go into my house, correct? So what if they have an older water main and you put the new lateral on, isn't it just going to blow up one of those old galvanized ones? Well, we had a couple of cases where uh, we came out of the street. The older lines are actually, the majority of the older lines are actually in the street. Uh, mm -hmm. to, to what used to be curb stops, okay? okay, and then newer connections to the houses that they tend to be newer than the, than the ones coming out of the street. So what we found uh, when we did Kidwell as an example was that some of those were the laterals that we replaced were so bad. I think you saw one of them. We scraped the we scraped the rust off of it. and It yeah. turned into a yard yeah. scraper. Yeah, yeah, so the, the only yeah. thing it was holding was rust. I mean, mine uh, so, was like that when we had it replaced. Yeah. So we'll it was be, bad. our jurisdiction and our ability is to only go to the edge of the uh, where the meter is going to be relocated behind the sidewalk, okay? Uh, if it's not already behind, I don't remember. I think yours might be in the sidewalk. I can't remember. It but is. I think it think is. So. so we'll be pushing that a little bit further over and then picking up your main or your, your service feed from there over. Now, one of the things we are doing is bringing one inch water lines over to the meters now, aren't we? Uh, and a three quarter, or five eighths, five eighths meter, is it? Or three quarter? <laughs> three quarter. Three quarter coming out to your house. So it'll be metered down, choked down at that point. If for some reason you need a larger capacity, you could always do that. But at the meter. Yeah. Okay. So you have to keep an eye on it. But we, we can't we can't go on private property. Our, our contract uh, only goes to the limits. I mean, I realize property. that, but I'm just worried about uh, it's not going to happen to me because I'm pretty sure our, our whole thing was. I think it, I think we did it like seven or eight years yeah, ago, yeah, from what I remember. But I'm just worried about some of my neighbors who, who haven't had that work I'm done. I have an old galvanized line too. Do you? I'm I not mean, ready to find out. Yeah. Are yeah. you gonna? I should, just, probably should have replaced it years probably. ago. Probably. <laughs> I guess I might be doing it now. Yeah, I mean, I'm just worried about some people getting this unexpected expense, and yeah. and it's not a pretty yeah. situation. Yeah, The houses tend to be newer, newer connections from the from the street to the house uh, than we've actually <coughs> expected. Because uh, once in the street are ancient. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. And I also am worried about the water bills because over the past couple of months we've had some. Um, we're billed for two units because we're not taking out that third floor kitchen. So we had a water bill, two of them for um, six to seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm when the work was going on in Kidwell, and I heard there was some other anomalies going around for um, people on Kidwell and... I don't know. Um, 
No, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with your account, but I'll look. We can, we can look, look into it. Did you have uh, other other issues with water bills though? When during the Kidwell on the on Brown Street, we had on Brown. Uh, a number of them right in one area. Mm -hmm. um, some of it was because of just what you're saying. The mm -hmm. old service lines from the meters to the house. Yeah, but when they get to that point, they're beyond their life and need to be replaced. I'm not going to tell you it's not going to happen. We're just it hoping that happen. for the most part, the lines from the meter to the houses have been replaced a couple times compared to the time that the, the town service lines have been in place. I will tell you that I've already talked to a couple different residents uh, on both Liberty and Commerce that called NASA and says, look, while you're doing all this work, I'm interested in replacing my private lines. Will you work with our contractors so that we can coordinate? And the answer is, of course, yeah, yes. Yeah. We've done it on yeah, other projects. A couple, a couple places, yeah. um, I people, mean, now would be the time to ask people to, to tell them. We have a lot of new people on South Liberty that may not realize that, that type of thing. So maybe some type of notice, now's the time if you want to take a look at this. So it's not going to blow up in your yard. <laughs> There's a home with that in the yard. On the it, website. If you go onto the town website, right on the home page, and look on the front, there's an icon you can click on. I know, I've seen it. And all of that kind of information is there if you read through it thoroughly. Don't get me wrong, I'm not going to tell you everything's on there. That's part of the reason for this <laughs> meeting, to get feedback so that we can put those type of things on it if we don't have it in there already. All right, let, let's uh, let's keep it going. If we okay. Can. Well, do you anticipate any issues with the water bills with during this? Yeah. Uh, and, and if any, anything, norm, normally, that. normally we don't spill any water during the during the construction, except during the blow off, and that's municipal water. It's not something going through your meter. Okay. Okay. We have to blow off a main at a hydrant to disinfect, which we, we which we do before we're allowed to open the main up. We'll disinfect the line and blow them off, but we'll be blowing them off through hydrants. Or through other valves that we have in the street, they won't go through your meter. Okay. Hi there. My name is uh, Jeff Felker. Tim, I talked to you. Yeah. I live at 303 North Commerce Street. Yeah. All right. So I just have a couple comments, suggestions, and a couple questions. Uh, the first, Tim, I told you this before. The method at which Town Council went about informing us residents, business owners, epic failure. And I understand that you're under the time crunch. You want to get utilities in before the SHA. But have you gone to the governor's office? Have you gone to SHA? Have you gone to the Secretary of the Department of Transportation and said, hey, we're doing our water and sewer main. Can we defer this a couple of years and have them put that funds to the side? Has that, has that meeting happened with the governor? Yeah, we, the, the funding for the, for the overlay was uh, regional funding. Uh, that's money that was set aside at the District 2 office. Uh, and yeah. that when we had that original discussion, you know, that it got, we wanted to go higher, but the money, the actual money that had been allocated for the, over, the milling and overlaying was all harbored, already, already dedicated by uh, District 2. Yeah, so I understand so, that it comes from District yeah. 2 and the money's yeah. put to the side and they have a certain schedule that yeah, they want to do the work, but about. did anyone go above them to say, hey, we want this deferred for three more years? Add, the State Highway Administration has bumped their paving project one year to accommodate us. us. Yeah, they did move a year and a half. So they, did they, have work with they were afraid they were going to lose right. their schedule. Which kind of goes back to my first statement. You guys knew about this, and we're just now hearing about this. That's, that's, and, and <coughs> then when I, when I talked to you, it was like, well, the last time we had it, they wanted to defer it. No one here wants to say, hey, the old clay pipe, the old water main, uh, we, we could let it go for a couple more years, put a couple more bandages on. I think everyone here will agree it needs to be replaced. But the method in which you're doing it is not right. And shutting down the entire Liberty or shutting down entire Commerce Street, that's not right. If you already have it broken up into four phases, and let me just come up here. If you have the first phase from the bridge, to Fayette. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're working here. This now is two-way. This is normal traffic as it stands today. Mm -hmm. Phase two, you do this. This becomes one way. This goes back to traffic the way it is today. You go here, vice versa. 
you reduce the impact, residents, business owners, that would help things out. That may take a little bit longer, but, but I mean, we're talking about something that should be sustainable. We have business owners. And when you shut down the entire road, that's going to adversely affect them. It's going to, well, well, this road, this road shut off. And, and I, live, I live outside of town. I want to go get a pizza. Right. Well, that road shut down. So now I have the park over here. Eh, you know, I'll go somewhere else. That's too much yeah. pain in the ass. And I think that's why we've been working with Sal to, to provide but, downtown park. But that's what I'm saying. You should really, whoever said that, it's because I think Tim on your voicemail said, well, it's going to be too difficult. I'm not sure who said that to you. And maybe they think that we're a bunch of short bullies. But I think we can figure it out. For, for we could figure out a simple diversion of traffic where you reduce it. And because now my house, it's already a pain in the butt to pull out. Now when this is two-way traffic, I'll be sitting there for probably a good half hour, 45 minutes trying to get out of my driveway. And Tim, you're like, oh, put this back in the night before. That's still going to be a pain in the ass because it's two-way traffic at night. You need to try to reduce the impact to us as residents and business owners and a community. And you guys have known about this for a long time. And we're now just hearing about it. So and that, or, that was not right. Could, could you comment on, on if you're gonna change it two way this way, two way that way, you know, changing it all around with the... Well, what, what I'm, I'm like saying is, well, they're doing work in the first phase. This yep. is shut off the through way, through way traffic, all right? This is now two way. When you get to this street, this traffic here comes up and it goes back to the way it is now. This traffic here comes in and now when you get to this point, it becomes two-way traffic. Okay, Kip, would you comment on, sure. on multiple? One thing everybody needs to remember, we don't, as I said before, we don't I, own the streets. I, I understand okay. it's SHA. All right, and all of those ideas, the ideas that you have, the exact one was the first plan we went to them with that they weren't going to permit it. You have to understand that they do it trying to avoid lawsuits. Everybody does business that way today. They have people in their engineering department that know what works best. The contractor that we had, that we hired, Traffic Concepts, that is their job. We looked at several different ways of detouring traffic. But what it comes down to is what the state will allow us to detour when and how. Like Mike said earlier, the state will not allow a detour off of a state highway onto county roads, onto town roads. This is the, the plan that they approved and they didn't come to this decision lightly. It's not like this hadn't been thought through. So, like so, said, just like anybody has to get a building permit to add onto their house or whatever, we had to get a permit from the state to redirect traffic. And they tell us how they'll allow it to be done. And we're beholden to what they will allow because of the state highway. Well, I, under I understand that belief, that concept, and, and that. But you also have other factors out there. And you go to them, you go above them and say, hey, your plan is going to adversely affect the businesses. And we're going to lose businesses because of this plan. And I know that you're saying that SHA, we can detour SHA onto county property and then back on the SHA. There is, has to be a way around that, bottom line. And, and you guys say, oh, well, we talked about it. I, 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 have, I have not... I don't want to say doubts, but I. Part of the rationale I, I think that, that, that brought the plan to where we are today is that if we establish a true traffic route one time for the whole construction of one street, one time for the whole construction of the second street, instead of uh, a bunch of jigsaw uh, separate you know, loops and detours, where we weren't sending tractor trailers to residential neighborhoods and the rest of it, that was the idea of, of doing a single one shot, uh, get everybody used to it start functioning uh, that way, and then when we make the shift, we really have two um, significant 
Uh, traffic adjustments. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. Well, part I, of that. all right. So, yeah, so let's, I, I, let's 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 kind of move on. Thank you. What about bringing that up? What about the crosswalks? Because right now it's all. I'm sure you guys use it. It's, it's so it's so can so we're gonna we'll maybe we'll address that at the end. But let's let's just keep it moving in fairness. I'm Aisha, I live on West Water Street, and we probably went al already went over this, and West Water Street is going to be two-way traffic, right? Yes. So it's constant accidents at the end of West Water Street where it meets Liberty Street. Uh -huh. And it's like the roads are already so narrow. It's barely any parking. And my mom, she lives in Graysonville. She's already talking about she's not even coming to Centerville. She doesn't want to come there. She doesn't want to come there. And nobody's going to want to come there. She's just going to go somewhere else. She's just going to stay on Ken Island. I, you know, I'm a former New Yorker. I'm someone that lived in New York. And one, you know, I'm someone that lived in New York. If I got a parking space, I would keep it for weeks. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, I didn't want to give it up. You know, I got a decent space. I didn't want to, you know, give it up. So now I'm not going to have a place to park. And I don't know where I'm going to park. Well, I, I'll tell you where you can park. So, yeah, uh, what we like, what we did was we, had a, if you walk uh, uh, down the street from your apartment or your, your uh, go around the corner on Liberty Street to where the old Methodist Church was, right behind that 105. Right next door. Right next door. Yeah. 26 new parking spaces right here, and we were. Uh, our goal was that all of the people that lived on West Water Street would have uh, safe off-street parking behind your building. Behind your house, okay, it's right here. So if you, when you leave here, if you want to go, just take a drive down. You can go right around the corner. In fact, you can look through the parking lot here, and you'll be able to see what we did here. We've added uh, 28. Uh, we're going to designate eight new spaces uh, here, and we've taken this area out and added 20 new spaces right in the back of it. So when you come home at night, just go right around the corner and park right behind your house. She's right across from me. Yeah. 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 Okay. Then these, then these twelve spaces at night will be open. Yeah. Okay. But it's just. This is. I'm sorry. This is going to be a shitstorm. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm um, Linda Calloway, and I'm on Westwater um, Cottage Cuts, and I've heard that. Um, Liberty is going back to its normal one way after all this construction and um, Commerce Street will go back to one way after the construction's over but I have not heard definitely that Water Street is going back to one way after all this construction. I've heard Mike say we're going to see how the flow of traffic is after this construction. Um, we're not quite sure. I want a definite answer tonight that uh, my storefront after this construction is over, we'll have parking in front of it. And I, I want to hear that tonight. That's that's the correct answer for me. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is. I think uh, the rationale for what we were doing was if, if the if the um, travel through Water Street at, on a two way scenario over time over the eighteen months that we're we're doing this uh, proves to be beneficial to the flow of traffic through South Commerce coming through here and then making the turn onto Broadway. Right? We, we got as far down as we could because we wanted to keep the ADA minimum. Our minimum ADA is four feet. The answer is yes, we could have cut your sidewalk back in front of you. Uh, we could get a variance from, uh, from ADA to do that and put those spaces back. That's certainly something that could be done. Um, but that doesn't affect whether it's a two-way street or not. Uh, that affects whether we could get that parking there. And a, a waiver, an ADA waiver, is certainly possible there. Uh, we didn't do it because we don't have time to do it, but uh, but that would be an option. Uh, another option would be to go ahead and just uh, reconvert the spaces that we did do it and do them permanently, so that those four or five spaces are permanent there. Like so, today, yeah. today, really, the answer we're telling people is it's intended to go back the way it is. But I will tell you, everybody we we meet and talk with, people are asking, are you going to put it back? And the answer is, it's our intention to put it back. When the time comes, when the project's over, the council, if all these people are asking that question, they'll have to entertain what the discussion is at that point in time. That wasn't give a definite answer. It's intended to go back, is, is what our plans are at this point. 
from a traffic flow, looking at the town as a whole, it would be nice if water was two-way. But nobody's going to do that at the expense of commercial activity. So if there is a way to make it work, and if it will work, we'll consider it, but only if it's going to work. We're not going to do anything stupid. See, I bought this building in 1995, and I bought it with parking in front of it. Yes, any, any storefront wants parking in front of their building. I understand. And here, out of any control of mine, I'm hearing, it's more we'll see. That's, that's not what any business owner wants to hear. We're businesses. That our, our parking is for Bob, is for me, is for Edwards. All I hear about from the people out here is the businesses take care of the businesses, but I'm not hearing that from your panel. With this episode, we all need more parking, and any storefront wants parking in front of it. And here, I've lost all the parking in front of my building. I'm having to rent parking monthly. Luckily, I have it, an option to rent it. But it's just, I don't understand. Um, for the flow of the buses that run, what is it, you know, twice a day, it's just not right. It's not right on the business owners. It's just not right. It's not safe for the buses. And let's see how those big trucks do on that road two-way. Let's see how what kind of um, situations mm -hmm. we run into. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But we'll see. I can't live off of we'll see. I know. I can't either, Bob. The bus, the bus drivers don't up. seem to have a problem. I, we'll just have to yeah. back this horse. All right. So let, 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 let's, let, if there's another question, uh, let's, move, let's move along. We have, are there any other questions? Is there anybody? Well, let's go down. Let's go down the the hall, and we're getting we're getting close to nine o'clock. I want to be able to wrap this up and let everybody move on. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Darren Brown. I live on Chesterfield Avenue. Um, just had one comment and four questions. Um, I pretty much agree with everything you guys have said in here. I think you guys have raised a lot of good concerns. I think some things could have definitely been done better, um, but overall, I think. I'm pretty happy about this prospect, especially when it'll be done. Um, I'm glad that the town is forward-thinking enough to replace infrastructure. It's an expensive thing to do. It's forward-looking, so I'm pretty happy about that, and I think most people here are as well. Um, I have one or I have four questions. First one, you talked a little bit. You don't know how long the state highway work will take when they're repaving 213. Um, how long after this work is done until state highway starts? Do you know that? They haven't, we can't answer for them. Okay. Uh, they've told us that they want to be right on our heels. Uh, I'm just, I guess I'm asking because I don't know what condition the road's going to be left in. Is it going to have steel plates? Or are you going to repay no, no, the trench? When, when our project is done, the road will probably be even smoother than it is right now to ride down because you'll have a continuous paved strip over top the utility trenches instead of but this ba bump, ba bump, ba bump right. that it is going yeah, through right. town now, where you have utility patch holes, maybe every five feet. Right, yeah. So okay. uh, it'll probably be a little bit smoother yeah. than what you have. And apparently, they won't break it down. We had asked if they would come. If we finish Liberty, would they come and do Liberty? So that when we move the two-way traffic over onto Liberty, it would be a perfectly smooth road. And they said, no, probably not. Yeah. The the way that their contract the way it's contracted is. It's for the lumps and yeah, some. Especially only if it's going to take a few days. Yeah, it's only yeah. a couple days and they, yeah. they just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Okay. I guess while you've got the trench cutting the roads, so you're replacing the sewer and the water, I mean, did you look? Is it a possibility you could put cable ducts under there like, and get these wires off the poles? Yeah, the is that a little bit? under sidewalk and the side. We're not, we're not uh, going to the, the, the curb and the sidewalk project is a, a future state highway project. And they would normally put the duct banks under the sidewalks. But so I mean, that was that, that, was that a requirement plan. to put them under the sidewalk? Uh, Couldn't they go under the road? It's a requirement now to put them under uh, on all bridge crossings, uh, for right. example. It's a design element that's now required. Uh, if, if and when the state ever made a proposal to come through, we would certainly recommend, I think Jim would be the first one on the, on the bandwagon, to make sure that duct banks were put in uh, under sidewalks on both sides of the street. But for I mean, future, you have to rip up the sidewalk to do that. 
it just seems to make sense. If you got the trench there, you might as well put it in. Yeah, it's just the cost of the road, duct. The, the difference is, is that the house laterals, all the laterals that come off to the various utilities, so, uh, would have to spring so. out of that central trench. You follow me? And when they're all, all when the duct bank is on both sides of the road, then they run to the houses without you know, you know interfacing with uh, with the center of the road. Okay. Plus, to to do that, the uh, it's very expensive to have overhead utilities put underground. Uh, we know this from experience from working with the county because the county chose to do the, the same thing in front of the new county courthouse and in front of the health department. It's not cheap at all and to be honest with you, we don't have that kind of money. To they didn't really that. do a duck bank. They did more of a direct berry type of a thing, I think, there, didn't they? They're yeah, going to. Yeah, going to. So your idea is the, is the right way. And, uh, and that is where at least we, we can at least springboard on the design criteria that the bridges have to have them on both sides. And these are significant ducts that, that they're building in, in the bridges. But, uh, but as far as going under, normally they would be under the sidewalks and be much more accessible without tearing up the street. Did, you, did you have anything else? Any other question? You know, another question? That was two. Okay, yeah, go ahead. two more. That'll be quick. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned the Liberty Street will be closed to through traffic, but open to local traffic. Yeah. So how is that controlled? The contractor uh, will, will have his own folks working there, his own flaggers. Uh, usually, uh, normally, it would either be his crew or Sussex crew. So that if you had a, a delivery, or a, it, unless it's right out in front of your front, directly in front of your house, that's where that's where the disturbance would be for a day or so to get past, get past your house. But normally, then the traffic would be maintained uh, uh, for all the local deliveries by the by the contractor and his flaggers. I guess say, say I want to drive to a property on Liberty Street. Uh -huh. Do I have to stop and say that I'm local, or do you get like a pass or like? No, yeah, no, it's no, just no, open. No, no, it would be it would be just on a okay. needed basis, mm -hmm. as served, because you know, there's no real effective way to do it any other way. It's okay. too too much bureaucracy. So we would uh, we would accommodate you as you come. Okay, and just one more quick question, sure. just for my own curiosity, since I live on Chesterfield yeah. Avenue. How old is the infrastructure going out Chesterfield, and is mm -hmm. there? Any old. any plan oh, for that? Chesterfield was redone. Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Okay. New utilities. Uh, the and correct me if I'm wrong. The the laterals were replaced there, but the utilities they're so they're still the old ones. Yeah. But uh, they're not as old as some of the ones that we're going to encounter okay. on Commerce and Liberty. All right, so I think that's our last one. We've had every, everybody's had an opportunity to comment and to ask a question. It's nine o'clock. The best thing to do if you have further questions, further comments, is go to the website, uh, submit them, and and we'll get them answered. Uh, so, council, do you have a, uh, Jeff? Do you have anything else you wanted to add? I think the biggest thing is is we all have to work together on this. Um, I'm kind of upset by hearing that everybody's saying that this is the first time they've heard about it. This is the first time they've seen these plans. But this was discussed in the budget between council. It was put out in the budget. It was it was put out at uh, several council meetings where we sent this out to bid to get the money to do this project. So I understand this part up here, nobody was given beforehand. But everybody who was involved with budgeting and all that had an opportunity to see that we were going to do this project. So. I understand that. Okay, please, Nikki, please. No, no, no. Nikki, you, you have had your opportunity, please. Please. So I am just as frustrated with this. Um, we've been hemmed in from both directions with time, getting the SHA permit to be able to do this and when we have to start to do it. And it's, it is frustrating. One positive out of this is seeing how the staff has been able to respond to the questions that we heard at our last meeting. We know this is not going to be a good process, and we're trying to do the best that we can. And, I, you know, if, if I have failed in any way to make this better for you, I will apologize right now. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to bring this to you sooner. I'm sorry that we weren't able to um, streamline some of this. So, you know, I will learn and do better next time about pushing an issue to make sure it works for you. In terms of the Water Street two-way traffic, don't misunderstand, I have no intention of sacrificing a business or the parking for a business. 
when we say that we're not sure about that, that means that um, we will look to see if we can find a way towards the best solution. And the best solution, as best we know it, is to return to what we have now after the construction is done. If we can find a better solution for traffic flow that maintains access and convenience for businesses, we'll look at that. But that's um, an opening that, that we'll get to. All of the solutions that we've talked about tonight in terms of flagging and access and temporary parking and all that, this can all be adjusted as we go along. None of this gets locked in concrete on July 3, uh, sorry, January 3. So we will continue to try to stay fluid if we see an opportunity to improve this and make it better for everybody. But it's a tough project. We have to find a way to work our, ourselves through it um, and hope that we all come out on the other side. Uh, yeah, so the only other thing I wanted to say is that I was looking at some old minutes before I moved to town, and I think it was in 2001, 2002, there was a talk about a streetscape, uh, and, and uh, there was some money in the budget, the state budget, to come in and do uh, some serious streetscapes. And at the time, the state came in and said, all right, town, if we're not going to redo this and spend all this money if you guys don't replace all the infrastructure. At the time, the town said, we're not going to do it. State said, see you later. Nothing got done. They came in in 2006 and then did the mill and overlay, and now we're dealing with the stuff that we have to deal with now. So it's, it's going to be a tough project, as Jim said, and it's going to be painful for everybody. And, and I can tell you that, you know, I go to meetings. I was at a meeting with a group of homeowners the other day, and they were saying, it's so difficult for me to get to my kids who go, i got to pick them up at the high school, the middle school, and then the elementary school. And inevitably, because of the way the traffic flows now, one of the kids is end up sitting in the office. So we've got pressures from many different groups pushing on us, and we're doing our best to make the best decisions that we can. And so, you know, all of us take time to, to, to hear everyone's concerns, and we're never going to make everybody happy, but we are going to do our best to make the decision based on what we feel is best for the town of Centerville, right? We all spend a lot of time here uh, doing this. We all live in town. We all sacrifice our personal time as well, and that's one of the reasons I think that we got elected to do this. So these are not easy decisions that we make, uh, you know, at all. So with that, again, if you have other questions, please, please feel free to submit things through the, uh, through the uh, email. I've given my cell phone out many, many times. It's up on Facebook. You are more than welcome to call me anytime. Uh, everybody have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. I'll yeah, listen to motion. everybody has shown up here tonight, and they've taken up time out of their schedules and everything, the, the two last things, you, you mentioned the mill and the overlay. The last time the, the state did it, they laid it up on top of the curb, you know, on top of the gutter. And so all this water goes into people's houses. It goes up on the sidewalks. It makes it. Is, is that going to be addressed? And the other yeah. thing yes. that I was hoping somebody else would bring up, and, you know, because you only have three minutes of pop, you know, to get this stuff out. But the issue about the crosswalks is really, really urgent. And, and I'm, I'm sure that the police chief is... Right now, crossing across in front of my house, if it isn't one of the policemen, because they always stop to let, to let people go over, whether it's children, and there's a lot of people that walk from the schools, a lot of children that walk from the schools and go home. But I'm going to tell you right now, you get two-way traffic on there, and I'm going to bet you right now, conservatively, if you were to sit out there, maybe one in 30 or 40 cars, and if it's in the evening, maybe one in 50, will let somebody go across there. So we'll now, work with State Highway on getting those little signs in the middle of the street. We will, okay. we will push I, them, we will push them to do that. Right. Yep. Tell you about we'll the push them. Real quick. Uh, we have a motion uh, to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, say aye. aye.